All right, folks, we've gotten to the big one. In fact, this is the longest episode of the Lizzie Bennet Diaries by about 30 seconds. I checked. And so we will have a long conversation about it. The longest version will, of course, be on the Patreon. Thanks for your support. My name is Ashley Clements. My name is Mary Kate Wiles, and I'm ready to cry. And this is the Cryback Diary. <laughs> True. That's true. <laughs> uh, of course, I had to have you on as the guest for this episode. Thanks. The next two. This was a real thing we did together. It sure was. Hey, what's the second longest episode? I'm curious. Snickerdoodles. Oh, sure. The sad ones are yeah. the longest. With exactly. Okay. <laughs> if we cry and we make you cry, we take more time with it. But it's... <laughs> It's like a full minute longer than any episode with Darcy in it. Wow, interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Boy, oh boy, it's not going to be fun to watch this back, but I'm doing it for everybody. Well, and they <laughs> might feel the same way. It helps a little bit. This is what I've been doing for the last couple episodes because we talk over them anyway. It's just like, yes. keep making jokes about it. Oh boy. They can watch and they should if they really want to rewatch it. The link is below. Go watch the episode yeah. without us talking over it if that's what you want to do. But if the episode is hard for you to rewatch, I will make inappropriate jokes because that is how I know to cope with things. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's what you uh, watch this show for. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> we, we, we are here to ease you through it. Um, just as I remind myself when I'm watching horror films at home, during daylight hours with many breaks. This is not real. Those are it's actors. Not. It's not, although I certainly felt it. I felt it. I felt it so much. More than I feel like, in some ways, other projects because of the nature of how we were shooting this and how uh, ongoing it was, how interactive it was. It yeah, and I think... I think that's that's an interesting thing to talk about because I have talked about, I think there's two sides to what you're saying that I agree with. And one that I have mentioned before is that we had played these characters for almost a year at this point. And because yeah. we shot monthly, we kept coming back again and again and again to them. We had also all become very close and so it was very accessible to get to these characters' emotions. We had gone on the journey with them. You know, I have oh, a brief Kitty Bennett appearance. A brief appearance from Kitty Bennett. That's about as much as she's willing to be on camera now. That's true. <laughs> she left. I couldn't even She find quit it. the biz. She's gone. <laughs> she did. She did. I can't blame her. You know what? I'm good for her. Good for her. <laughs> Sorry um, to interrupt what you were saying. No, for a star like Kitty Bennett? <laughs> that is true. <laughs> for she can't Rosie be <laughs> Wiles. Yeah. Uh, the actor uh -huh, uh -huh. playing Kitty Bennett. Accomplished actor. Maybe only one credit to her name, but significant. <laughs> Very significant. significant. Who could forget it? But so we, yeah. as actors, it was such a rewarding experience to play these characters for a long time. And in many ways, it made the job easier because as an actor I had gone on this fairly chronological journey with yeah. Lizzie like yes we would shoot out of order on the day but it was still because we were shooting monthly still relatively in order going on this journey and just spending so much time with it but as you mentioned there were more aspects of it social aspects that made it kind of, you know, take over our lives in, in other ways and very much so. maybe blur some lines yeah, for us. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's weird. Is there anything it's... else you want to say? <laughs> it's Should weird say to... More about that? <laughs> no, it's just weird to watch it back now uh, with, like, the distance from it because I was so so protective of Lydia at the time and now it's like yeah and I'm glad that I was because I think it you know it's good to feel that way about your characters but it's interesting to 
have some space. When you say that you felt so protective of Lydia, I'm like, well, yeah, because we'd also spent like 10 months at this point yeah. reading comments from people yeah. being mean about Lydia a lot yeah. of the time, you know, yeah. like. Your performance in this show overall is highly praised. So lots of good comments as well. But there were more negative comments about Lydia than probably anything else about the show. She was a very polarizing character. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah. And even if your character isn't supposed to be likable, that is still hard for actors to see. Yeah, I think so. And usually you don't. <laughs> usually, usually you're don't. like usually not doing that really or the extent of it is like you shoot something and do like a press tour and talk about it after the fact you're not like right ongoing. and there's some distance yeah you're yeah. not like in an ongoing situation where you're having to field people's reactions to the work that you're doing as you're doing the work very bizarre. Yeah, and there were times too that like we knew what was coming. We knew we were setting up something that was going to pay off well, like this whole uh Lydia spin-off section with Wickham. Mm -hmm. Rachel knew exactly what she was setting up, but not everybody knew the journey that they were being taken on. Yeah. And so there was backlash sometimes you know that, that i'm sure holds up <laughs> the criticism is valid but there were some things that we were just going like just wait <laughs> yeah. just wait we're doing this I on purpose so remember that feeling but i'm thankful for that time because i feel like i learned a lot <laughs> yeah no like yeah and also we truly will never have not and will not experience anything like it again right yeah i mean even if some other level of fame came along it would be very different yeah you just than this. the the way that the show was was so odd and like not normally how you the experience you're ever going to have acting in basically anything yeah it's very once in a lifetime sort of deal yeah and i think you know that we would also do it differently now yeah. that we know <laughs> now that we've done it we would know how to do it better yeah i think that's like, true there it's trial by fire but it's also like not in terms of the re real situation but even the acting like of course i look back on it now and i'm sure you <laughs> feel a similar way having just watched through basically the whole show of course i look back and i go man i would play this differently now i oh I yeah have so much more life experience now than I did at this time but like that's also part of the beauty of it like I'm I'm too old to play Lydia now you know like I needed to be that age and I needed to be and I was like so much more of a like fiery passionate emotional person at that time in my life and that's very much who she is you know so like it's funny to like want to be like, oh, I know I could do this in a way that I feel like would be better now, knowing what I know and being who I am. But there's something about like, no, it you it had to be at this time. Like it happened at the right time for it. And the things that the person that you were, the actor that you were at that time is part of what made the character who they were. Yeah, absolutely. I think at this point, 87 episodes in, I've gotten good at just turning the critical part of my brain off in terms of criticizing my acting because mm -hmm. it, what what is the point of that at this point and you know I have to remember like I was at the top of my ability at the time yeah a decade has passed and also that they loved it that yeah. the audiences loved it and yeah. the fact that I'm sitting here being like no, I don't think that was the best choice I don't yeah. like that I I would do that differently now is you know, this is a time capsule in so many yeah. ways and it also of our lives. And gosh, I mean, that must be true of like every actor. I know. I, so I was just thinking about like movie stars being like, wow, when I did that movie when I was 22 or whatever, thinking about like, of course, they probably would do things differently. But yeah, I mean, but also, you know, <laughs> and here I am making a choice. <laughs> Most people probably don't go back and rewatch yes. their old work. Probably not, but there's a certain amount of it that you can't ever escape, I don't think. It's like yeah. if you were in something that was very popular, people are always going to 
want to talk about it to some uh, you know, some extent mm-hmm. here and there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's good for actors to learn to watch themselves. Or like and... he, Elijah Wood, like thinking about, wow, I did Lord of the Rings when I was 18 years old. Like, how does he feel? You know what I mean? Like, he must go. Let's well, and he started that. acting when he was right. like a baby. But obviously, it's something he's never going to stop like reflecting yes. on or whatever. Like, just not, well, and, and not the, to put us like, in the same category, but no, we're the same. <laughs> we made the same amount of money. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm just piling up my stacks of residuals. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Just to clarify for the audience, we do we don't get any residuals for the fact that this show has no, been on YouTube for, for no. ten years. No, 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 no. That no, was no. not in the new media contract at the time. No one had any concept of the fact that no. something would be on YouTube and be this popular for this long. Like it wasn't a recommend making a career in internet acting as a way to pay your bills. <laughs> Check yeah. out both of our Patreons. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, okay. Let's watch this very long episode. Let's do it. It's my sad shirt. Oh boy. Here we go. <laughs> Um, yeah, I wanted to look like I could sort of barely dress myself. Of course, I'm still wearing a little bit of makeup because I'm on camera, but I did tell the makeup artist like less, maybe like I slept in my makeup and I didn't get it all off of me. And I remember that I did this monologue in one take and I was mad when it came out and there were cuts in it because I did like more crying. Mm -hmm. But considering it is the longest episode, it did need the cuts. And also very weird and self-indulgent if I uh, <laughs> just left, if Lizzie had left in like, here's the part where I'm crying, but not talking. I can, I can see why you would feel that way. But as an actor, I was like, yeah, but like, tears I was streamed so good. down my face. I'm so good. I, oh my gosh, I this know. is, I forgot. What? James I was just about to say that this is yeah. the everyone deserves tea episode. Yeah, I, 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 I think had, so. I should have brought my mug out, but you know, <laughs> yeah, I should have got mine. They've appeared. Several of my writer guests have used them. Oh, here fun. we are. But I do remember that like Jenny had to bring the mugs from her house because that had oh, been established right. as the Bennett's mugs. Yeah, I also, when I revisited this episode, was like, oh, Jane's here. (laughs) I feel bad that we forget that Jane's here. Sorry, Laura. You're great. That's partly why it's such a long episode, because I was like, do we just cry for eight minutes? (laughs) Both of your hair look so luscious. It's because we have lights. Yeah, it looks great. We were pretty much always dependent on just natural light. And this this is the only location where we have no natural light, and but we had those big kinos and we actually for the first time like couldn't see bernie and yep. margaret sitting there because i do remember blocked. like a fair amount of people being here on this day like sitting in front of us people that i didn't know well, there was like more space and yeah. we couldn't see them so there were just mm-hmm. people sitting back there how about that you website? know and obviously this is uh, yeah we've, we've talked about that is that better <laughs> oh yeah Oh, yeah. And a lot of people, because they didn't watch it at the time, hadn't seen right. it. So they were like, oh, my God, that's so bad. And yes. And so obviously this is a huge part of Lizzie's art. Like, and sitting here and wallowing in guilt, yes. But like, we that part is there so that we've seen Lizzie sort of a tone in a way and then look at you you have you really have no makeup and she's sad you're gray and you're just she feeling sad she feeling so sad a sad girl <laughs> and then that is it that is this this is a, a true observation like and then you just post it online <laughs> well yep magically better oh sweetheart of course, uh, wonderful writing by Rachel. 
I don't want to film this, uh, you know, grappling with the things that need to be grappled with. But this part, uh, right, you're, I don't know, at some point you're about to start listing the types of comments. And I just want to point out that they hadn't been written yet because we filmed this before a lot of that stuff had aired. We, we would have filmed this somewhere in like mid-January. And not all of the George stuff had even aired, but Rachel knew because Rachel was tapped into the fan responses. This section, yeah. And indeed, people have said this stuff. Exactly, that like she accurately predicted what the comments would be based on yeah. what had happened prior. And so I think that the audience thinks that we were really responding to those comments. And in fact, we knew, Rachel knew yeah. what you were going to say. Just predicted. I mean, there were also a lot of people who were very sympathetic towards Lydia. Yes, In the absolutely. comments, for sure. But there were these comments. They, they were there. Oof, and bringing that line back, which Rachel had written the, the first version of way back yeah, like so many episodes 85 ago. episodes ago or something <laughs> i'm oh. sorry that i'm laughing i'm thinking about the time i i tried to tell my mom that that this is what the scandal was going to be and i was in a laundromat and she couldn't hear me and i just kept yelling it's a sex tape into the phone oh, no. over and over again oh, in the laundromat God. that's <laughs> terrible just to break up the sand <laughs> Yeah, see, that's helpful. And I mean, the things you're saying right now, this is some of what really resonates with the audiences. And I certainly found plenty to relate to my own experiences being in uh, not so healthy relationships myself. And I'm glad that it's something that a lot of people could, I don't know. I mean, I think there's, we know that there's catharsis. That's just yeah. going back to like yeah. Aristotle's, you know, but also people found it, I think, very healing that Lydia gets to the other side. That yeah. <laughs> she is voicing the worst thoughts in her head out loud. And if you've ever had thoughts like that, then you, you feel seen. Yeah. And then the the responses that I would hear, because we should uh, talk about this uh, partly after the episode, but also, I mean, the, the, she's saying important things here. This is his fault. Like, this is, this is not Anya, which is essentially saying you're a victim and you're not responsible for how you were abused. Yeah. I also think it's very heartbreaking and well-written how Rachel has Lydia grapple with her feelings about Wickham that if he's going, like, I mean, this is, yeah. And she loves him. And I, I think know. that is obviously what is so hard about being in a unhealthy relationship is that mm -hmm. you, you love mm -hmm. the person. Yeah. Well, and he he very, you know, it's well documented on Lydia's channel that he he isolated Lydia and really made her feel like I'm the only person who yeah. understands you and loves you. And yeah. this part is, of course, extremely heartbreaking for, for people, too. And, and also, like, hats off. Hats off to you, too. Tough, tough episode. Um, and you, I think, for the, the hardest parts there at the end. I don't think so. You really let yourself go there. I think both of us. We did good. It's a group effort. I mean, like, I could critique it to heaven, but as I said, it's not. And, and this means something to people. So, like, they don't need me coming in and going like, well, actually, my acting could have been better. <laughs> Ooh, I forgot that we just, like, cut to black. No music. I'm glad that it means so much to so many. Yeah, but so I guess what I wanted to bring up, because uh, I've alluded to it earlier, that this arc and these episodes specifically are what 
both of us got the most fan comments. Yeah, absolutely. Private messages. I mean, obviously about. I did. I think the fact that you got so many, I mean, you right. know. Yes. That Just, really yes. speaks. Well, and also, like, what were people going to say to me about Darcy? Like, where's my <laughs> Mr. Darcy? I got, like, three, where's my Mr. Darcy? And I was like, I cannot help you. He I is fictional. <laughs> I'm not a matchmaker. <laughs> like, what do you want from me? What I would hear, the messages that I would get were from sisters, were from people saying, I didn't realize yeah. the ways that I was not fully seeing my sister, the ways that I was dismissing things about her, the way that I didn't try to know who she was, the ways that I was just frustrated that she wasn't who I thought she should be. I heard so, so, so many messages. And then I would get like a few messages from people who would say that the way that Lizzie supported Lydia meant a lot to them because that was the kind of support that they needed. But you would have heard probably from a lot of people who'd been in abusive relationships. Yeah, absolutely did. Absolutely did. Yeah. <laughs> it was, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry that they exist and that they happen. And I'm glad that people were able to, I mean, there are plenty of people that were like, oh, this helped me realize that I'm in one or was in one, which is wild. And also, again, like I certainly have been in abusive relationships with boys I've dated. It's not quite exactly the same circumstances as here, but, and I'm sorry that that is obviously such a common thing that so many of us have experienced, but I am glad that it is something um, that in instances like this, we can find common ground and healing and community through in art. So I'm thankful. I'm yeah, I obviously never could have imagined when I got cast as Lydia Bennett that like the, the, this would have happened, that it would have become something that was so um, yeah, real and raw and just really, I think, I mean, I'm biased, but just like the, the thing that makes our adaptation such a, I don't know that it, it's what makes it a success, but makes it what it is, you know, makes it different and makes it important in a lot of ways. I mean, I think in a lot of ways, this is the most divergent from the book. Yeah. And within that, it is the most kind of creative and unique mm -hmm. thing about our show. Like, there's mm -hmm. a lot of things about our version of Pride and Prejudice that make it unique. Mm -hmm. But the very idea of redeeming Lydia, I don't know that anyone had done that at that mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. and also like putting a little more context on just how terrible what Wickham did was because I think it's easy to like obviously it is so different but it's easy to read that and it feels so far removed and it's like okay they like had to get married they ran off whatever well and in the book Lydia's like so proud right she's like right. I'm of course the first one married of and course like you know she can she's also a to... child <laughs> She's 15, yeah. and she continues to represent the kind of thoughtless, irresponsible person who's just not thinking about the consequences of her actions. In many ways, the biggest divergence in Lydia's character overall is that she does understand the consequences. Let's, oh, I don't, I don't, I'm like almost scared to do it, but let's look at the comments. I mean, I'm sure they're nice, but... Um, <laughs> Kirsten Paff, me, episode one. Oh, look, it's a funny modern AU of Pride and Prejudice. Me, episode 87, bawling my eyes out. <laughs> Welcome! Anna says, one of the things I love the most about this adaptation is how Lydia has a chance. She's a real person here with good traits and bad traits, a person who makes mistakes. As much as I love the book, I always feel bad for Lydia because she is such a shallow character there. And in the end, she had her future ruined by her, uh, this is ingenuity, but I think she means the, the Being it. Um, naivete, Na really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like an ingenue might have, yeah. and no chance of fixing it. And that's it. Mm, that's interesting. Joy T16 says, Lydia, I let him film that, Gigi, and I let him 
he moved in with me. The parallels. Yeah, that we see these women blame themselves for abuse. And that is also so common. And I think that is part of why this arc resonates with people so much is that Lizzie is here saying, it's not your fault. And I love you and I'm here for you. Katie Grimm highlighting everyone deserves tea. Jane Bennett, philosophy I live by. That was also a line that we had no idea at the time that it would become. Yeah. I mean, this is a, there's a lot going is. on in this episode. And the fact that that became yeah. so popular that they made a mug. And yeah. that was also popular. And Amos says, going back and rewatching this episode is hard. We understand. It's when I started to realize my own abusive relationship. Nothing so dramatic as a sex tape, but it's almost been a year since I left him. Thank you, LBD, for helping me realize that relationship was toxic. Not sure where I'd be now if I hadn't left him. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there because... <laughs> yeah. I, but that's exactly, Crazy. I think, the type of comments we're I'm glad, glad that this was helpful. Yeah, I'm glad we could some do some, some good in the world with yeah. our, our tears. A girls, our <laughs> girls and their tears. Yeah. We made tears. You made tears. We all cried. <laughs> Everybody made tears. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> well, stick around. We'll check in with our tears in the next episode. <laughs>